Hey, how's it going, everybody? How's it going, Mount Olive family? I am so excited to see you. I am so excited to be with you as we continue to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in this awesome Holy Week. And as we continue not just to walk through our devotions and our Monday through Friday devotion time, but also as we draw near to Holy Week, as we follow Jesus to the cross, and as we get to celebrate his glorious resurrection this upcoming Sunday. So I just wanted to say good morning. I know it's a little bit colder than maybe some of us are uh, prepared for, but as I have been told and reminded of, you know, we live in the great state of Wisconsin. We never know what we're going to get, but it is still a beautiful day, and I hope that you guys are all staying warm and staying safe, and just wanted to say hello to everybody joining us this morning. So good morning, Wendy. Good morning, Sharon. Good morning to everybody who is watching and logging in with us, right? we Also, we want to remember, don't forget to hit that share button, okay? We want to continue to reach out and engage the Word of God with as many people as we possibly can. And we want to continue to spread the love of Jesus by any means necessary. And sharing these videos, sharing these devotions is a really awesome way to do that. So good, <clears throat> good morning to everybody joining us. Good morning to everybody logging in for the devotion. So as Easter Sunday gets closer, I'm sure a lot of us have seen or gone out to stores, and we've all seen uh, the Easter candy that has just seemed to flood uh, Triggs and flood Walmart and just kind of flood our grocery stores. Uh, so my question for you this morning is about a pretty controversial uh, Easter candy item. And it's I'm talking, of course, about Peeps. Peeps. Those little marshmallow uh, chicks are peeps in your my question for you are peeps a treasure or are peeps trash do you love peeps do you hate peeps but i want you to comment uh if you love peeps let us know that they are a treasure that you love peeps that you look forward to them but if you could uh kind of care less for them you're not really their biggest fan say trash because it seems like whenever i talk to anybody or whenever we talk about easter candy it's pretty polarizing. Like, there's nobody who just says, peeps are, eh, okay. Peeps are, eh, they're, they're decent. They either love them or they really, really, really don't like them. So, are peeps treasure or are peeps trash? Personally, and I say this out of love, for me, peeps are trash. I know, I know. You, you can, you can, I'm sure I'll get some emails after this, but I... I just don't like peeps. I'm sorry. I'm I'm not a big fan. My Easter candy is the Reese's peanut butter egg. That that is that is the gold standard. That is by what the candy that I measure everything by. So, as you're joining us this morning, uh, let us know. Easter peeps, are they a treasure for you or are they trash? So, we are going to get into our devotion this morning. So, if you've got your Bibles, go ahead and uh, get your Bible out. And we are going to be in Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. And we are going to look at the first couple of verses. And we're going to look at this encounter that Jesus has with the Pharisees and the scribes concerning tradition. Concerning man tradition, man-made traditions that have kind of influenced and, and solidified their way into the Jewish faith. So here we go, starting at Matthew chapter 15, verse 1. Then the Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat. Jesus answered them, And why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? So already we have this pretty stark contrast taking place. The Pharisees are mad at Jesus and his disciples because in the eyes of the Pharisees, Jesus and his disciples are breaking the law of tradition. But Jesus doesn't waste any time. He doesn't even entertain the thought of answering their question. Jesus turns it right back on them and says, why do you, instead of holding tradition, why do you, for the sake of tradition, why do you break the law, the commandments of God? Verse four, for God commanded, honor your father and mother, and whoever reviles his father or mother must surely die. But you say, if anyone tells his father or his mother, what, what you would have gained from me is given to God, he need not honor his father. 
So for the sake of your tradition, you have made void the word of God. You hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. So that's where we're going to stop in the text this morning. <clears throat> but we can see that there's a lot of there's a lot of things going on here. So the Pharisees are so concerned that Jesus and his disciples, they're not following in their eyes tradition, the traditions of the elders, the traditions that have kind of made their way into Jewish society and Jewish culture. And the Pharisees at this point, remember, they're the religious leaders. They are the leaders who say like, if, if you want to worship God, if you want to if you want to get closer to God, these are all the things that you have to do. And they turned the they turned following God into something that's very what a word is legalistic. Like you have to do so many things. You have to keep all of these rules, and if you don't, then God won't love you. That's kind of the angle that the Pharisees are preaching at. That's the angle that they're teaching their hearers. But what Jesus say what Jesus is saying is, look, your your laws, your tradition, your tradition, you're putting it on equal level, if not elevating it above the actual word of God, the actual commandments of God. And Jesus says that is not OK. You don't do that. There is nothing above the word of God. That is the word of God is where we hold our absolute truth. There is nothing above it. There is nothing greater than it. There is no rule there is no tradition that takes more importance over God's word. And Jesus is very quick to call them back out on it because he talks about, he, he references the fourth commandment. And the Pharisees, they're saying like, look, if your mom or dad doesn't do anything for you, then you don't need to honor them. But Jesus is saying, no, guess what? Scripture, God's word, God's commandment for you says, honor your father and mother. There's no, there's no getting around it. There's no loophole. And he just kind of broadens that and saying, look, there's no loophole that you do. There's no loophole that gets you any ability to throw the word of God away for the sake of your tradition and follow the tradition instead of the word of God. And Jesus, he also turns it right back on them. And he says in, I, he quotes Isaiah. Now, Isaiah was a very, very prominent prophet in Jewish writing, Jewish culture. So the fact that Jesus is quoting Isaiah, I mean, he's quoting it because he knows that the Pharisees know Isaiah very, very well. I mean, the Pharisees and all religious leaders have studied various scripture. They've studied all the writings of the prophets and Moses. So when Jesus quotes Isaiah, I mean, he does so with a purpose. He does it to say, and he quotes the Isaiah verse where he says, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Where he's saying they look and they present themselves like they're following God, like they're they're saying that they're they believe in God, but <clears throat> in their heart of hearts, they're really all about themselves. Their hearts are far from God. Their hearts are more focused on tradition than they are the actual word of God. <laughs> in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. So Jesus is saying, You're not teaching. You're not teaching God's word. You're not teaching the love of God. And if you were, then you would realize that you must be humbled, that there's no tradition, there's no man-made tradition that takes precedent or supersedes the law and the word of God. And that's what Jesus teaches you and me today. And that's something I think you and I can glean from it. Where we have traditions that, yes, some traditions we have are good and God-pleasing, but one thing that Jesus wants us to keep in mind is that there is no tradition, there is no man-made tradition that takes press that is elevated above the actual word of God. There is no tradition that has ever been man-made or that exists right now that is more important than the word of God for us. Because the word of God, we know, is Jesus Christ. It's literally Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. The word came down from heaven the word who took our sins to the cross, who lived the perfect life in place of us and in place of us bore the penalty of our sins, went to the cross and was an, a final and perfect sacrifice for you, for me and for the entire world. So what Jesus is saying here is 
Don't get so wrapped up in tradition. Don't get so wrapped up in your own way of thinking, but instead put the word of God first and foremost in your lives. Put the word of God, make sure that there is nothing above the word of God in your lives, because that's ultimately what's most important. And we know that the word of God is all about love. The word of God, God gives us his word. He gives us the Bible because he loves us. He wants us to get to know him better. He wants us to read it, ingest it, meditate on it, and realize that it's pointing us closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I think that's a really awesome lesson for us today, especially as we get ready for Holy Week. We literally are walking with Jesus to the cross to see him fulfill the mission that God has put him in this world to do. So I just wanted to wrap up there, and I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with thankful hearts. And Lord, we just thank you so much for your word that continues uh, to create and strengthen faith in all who hear it. And Lord, we just ask that uh, in all of our lives, in our comings and goings, that your word be the most powerful and important thing in our lives. By the power of your Holy Spirit, just continue to help us uh, put you and the needs of others before ourselves. And Lord, just help us see through uh, the folly traditions and see through uh, the fakeness and the disingenuousness of tradition and see you above all. Because you are Lord of all, you are creator of all, and your love is for all. And you prove that for us by going to the cross and dying in our place and rising from the tomb that very first Easter morning, that very first resurrection Sunday morning. Lord, I pray that you continue to be with all of us as we journey through Holy Week, that we continue to follow you to the cross and that we continue uh, to just grow closer to you and to give you praise, honor, and glory as we celebrate your resurrection this upcoming weekend. And it's this prayer that we pray into you and all God's people said, amen. Church, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're not going to have devotions tomorrow or Friday, but instead we want you uh, to join us for Monday, Thursday worship, and we want you to join us for good Friday worship. So tomorrow, Monday, Thursday worship is at 630 in the worship center. That will also be streamed online on our Facebook and our YouTube. Our Good Friday services are at 1230 and 630, both in the worship center with the 630 service being streamed online as well. And if you have any questions about our our Holy Week times or our service times or locations, you can find all that information on our Mount Olive website or on your Mount Olive app. And we just want to wish you a very blessed Wednesday. Stay safe and we will see you next time. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.